I'm Marty Cohn, and welcome to episode 29 of PR Benefits, a show that explores the role of public relations in the COVID-19 era. I've been a PR practitioner for over 45 years, helping a wide array of organizations successfully communicate their messages to targeted audiences. I mistakenly thought that 9-11 would be the watershed event in my lifetime. Communicating in the aftermath of that tragic event was challenging. Then came the global economic downturn in 2008 with more lessons in crisis communications. However, 12 years later, we have the coronavirus pandemic and new challenges and uncharted waters have emerged. My guest today is Latricia Woods, president of Mahogany Zahn Communications in Chandler, Arizona. Now, let me tell you what I've discovered about her. She is the founder and president of Mahogany Zahn Communications, a public relations firm working with an impressive roster of clients to develop and implement their communication strategies. She has been named as 40 Under 40 in both the city of Phoenix and Wichita, Kansas, who recognized her professional achievements and community involvement. She's currently an adjunct professor for the Maricopa Community Colleges, leading courses for marketing and advertising for small businesses. She's an accredited public relations practitioner through the Public Relations Society of America. She's achieved a Bachelor of Arts degree in communications with an emphasis in public relations and a Master of Arts degree in organizational communication, both from Wichita State University in Wichita, Kansas. She, she's a member of the PRSA, Public Relations Society of America, where she serves on the Council's Academy Executive Committee. She also served as the president of the Kansas chapter, a board member for the Phoenix chapter, and as a member of the National Diversity and Inclusion Committee. Now, I could just stop there, but wait, there's more. Prior to the creation of her firm, she worked in the city governments of Wichita, Kansas and Maricopa, Arizona as a public information officer and as the assistant to the city manager for the city of Scottsdale. Latricia currently serves as a member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority and is a sustaining member of Junior League of Phoenix. In 2019, she was appointed national public relations chair for the top ladies of distinction. She's also the co-author of A Girlfriend's Guide to Social Media. Welcome, Latricia. Thanks for coming Thank on the show. You. Thank you for having me. Wow, well, that was I got <laughs> I Listen, the, the most fun that I have, aside from actually getting to do the show, is, is um, uh, Googling you um, <laughs> and, and Googling guests and, uh, you know, and, not, and it doesn't count as stalking because I'm actually learning. <laughs> so, so but, but there's a couple of things that, um, uh, that I, I, I got to find out because sure. what wasn't included is how did you get started in public relations? I actually majored in public relations way back in the day at Wichita State University, go shockers. And um, I thought I wanted to be a marketing major, but I love the aspect of telling stories and communicating with audiences and connecting people. So communications and public relations in particular really just kind of did it for me. And so I, I got my major and then I went back for my master's in organizational communication. And I am, I'm blessed to say that public relations is pretty much all I have done in my 25 year career. Okay, well, that's good. I, I, and I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, and I'm glad that, that you are. Another question that I just have to ask before I, Mahogany Zahn communications. <laughs> yes. Okay, I googled it. I tried to figure it out. How did you come up with <laughs> There's that? There's a magic there. There's a magic there. Um, I wanted a name that really not just spoke to me, but inspired me to create. So when when Mahogany Zan came together, Mahogany is, is a really beautiful wood that's very strong and functional and just really beautiful inside and out. Zan is short for Xanadu and not the movie. But the creative mythical place in, in the poem um, Kublai Khan, that describes Kublai Khan. And so for me, Mahogany Zan was strength and creativity comes together to create a beautiful connection. So that's how we got Mahogany Zan. 
<laughs> okay, I love it. Thank you so much. It was like, I, I couldn't find it anyway. You might want to add that to your website. It, it actually just, is just, hidden on my about page, but we're doing a ah. redesign, so they may have done something. But yeah, it's hidden okay. on my about page. <laughs> there, there's okay, a good. little, because I, I used to get that question a lot after, you know, how do you pronounce it? But I wanted to make sure that while I love the movie Xanadu, it was not named for it. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. All right, so so I, now I'm going to take you back into history. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, I want you to think back to pre-COVID-19, so that's oh. about nine months ago. Yeah. What, what, would, what would you consider some of your, of the highlights of your pre-COVID-19 career? Wow, some of the highlights. Um, definitely creating strong communication strategies um, when I served in Wichita, Kansas, Scottsdale, Arizona, and Maricopa, Arizona, I actually received awards for work that I had done in Scottsdale, Arizona. I would, I would say that I treasured my my years in as the PIO in Wichita as very diverse learning experiences for me, because I just was able to learn crisis communication from the inside out because I was actually in Wichita, Kansas during 9-11. And so that was, a, I, that was a very pivotal time in my career because I actually had just started with the city three months prior to. So being there for that, um, being there for SARS, because we, uh, one of my departments was the airport. So SARS, which was kind of the precursor to what we're experiencing today, um, those were really pivotal times in my career. And then from there, you know, and what was great about Maricopa was it's a new city that was building its brand and telling its story. So being on the ground to help with that. And all of that just kind of propelled me to want to start my own business and help other organizations, um, tell their story, connect with their audiences, build strategy, develop their awareness. And that's what I'm able to do with a, a very diverse level of clientele right now. Okay, very good. So, all right, so now let's segue to, to now. Um, now. Yeah, what, what are you doing for your clients during COVID-19? Well, that's been really interesting, actually, because when COVID first happened, I would probably every other business owner was like, how is this going to impact my business? And is it going to impact it negatively? And what's going to happen to my clients? Because we didn't know what we didn't know. And I have always had a very diverse clientele where people were kind of like, you don't really have a niche. You're kind of here and there and small business retail and nonprofit and education. There's no rhyme or reason. How does that work for you? And when COVID hit, it really became beneficial because where one industry kind of took a break because of COVID, others kind of stepped up and said, you know, this is what we need to do. We need to build new messaging. We need to build new strategy. How do we go forward? You know, so what I thought was going to be a huge turndown in our industry actually was very solid. Um, it was very continuous as far as, as work product and um, new new client business even. I think for me, what was most beneficial, not beneficial, but what was most impactful during this time was the impact of COVID immediately followed by the impact of George Floyd. And so for my company in particular, it was two crises in one. So while I had clients that were very focused on COVID communication and crisis communication for COVID, I had others that were very focused on crisis communication and multicultural communication because of George Floyd and the racial injustice that, that followed. So the month of June and July were like a blur because it was the it was the combination or the the collision of both of those episodes and while my clients were trying to figure out the way to go i also had colleagues who would call and say you know i really need to talk to you or i really would like to get some ideas on how to talk to my clients about what is going on and how they can 
position themselves because a lot of corporations wanted to come out and just say something and do something, but they didn't know how or when or where to start or how to be authentic. So having that opportunity to provide help and counsel to my colleagues was very beneficial as well. And what I have told them and what I have practiced with my clients in both realms is as PR counselors, it is our duty, it is our job, it is the expectation of our clients that we are their conscience. Because we see things that they do not see because they're, they're focused on their business and they're focused on their day to day. They're not seeing things at the level that we do because we're looking at things through several different lenses. So now is the time to have those conversations with your clients that you may not want to have because they're the difficult ones on, on messaging, on strategy, on values. But if you don't have those conversations, you're really doing your clients a disservice because that is what they're coming to you for. So even for colleagues that are not in agencies or have their own companies but are working in-house, you're still that conscience for your company and you still have to propel them to get them where they want to be. Because for COVID or racial and social injustice, this is the time where companies decide what side of history they're gonna be on and you have to guide them to be on the one that's going to serve them and their audiences the best way. So, so what you're saying, no, no, no. So, so what you're saying is, and, and, and I totally concur with you. I mean, that's what a PR counselor does. I mean, we counsel, we, we counsel our clients. You're also counseling your, your fellow uh, PR folk, you know, about, about this as well. Mm -hmm. What has there been any change in terms of, um, in terms of communicating, are, are you using different communication tools? Are you using more, um, is it more internal? Is there external what, in terms of the messaging? Um, I think the communication tools are still the same. You, the messaging levels are just different and, and they're still different, differating. Um, I had one client who again, the, the circles collided for them and a lot of their younger members of, of their organization had been impacted by COVID because they were college students. And so right. dorms were shutting down and, and internships and job opportunities were being lost because economies were shutting down. And so they actually wanted to do a special fundraising campaign just to help their undergraduate members. And it was really interesting because they were able to engage members that may not have given to the, to the foundation before or had given once and was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm good. But because it was something that was driven by, I want to help these young men who have been impacted by COVID, you know, get to where they are okay and help them to get to a place that they can sustain themselves. Um, that was very powerful for them. And I remember when we launched that, we launched that the Sunday right before Memorial Day and I ate right before George Floyd. And we were like, okay, it's Memorial Day and we might not get a lot of donations and applications from the undergraduates because it's a holiday. Within the first 24 hours, 200 undergraduate members had applied to receive a grant. And we were like, okay, by the end of the week that had doubled. And so it was great that we, um, it was a month long campaign. It was called Brothers for Brothers. They raised uh, over $100,000 in 30 days to match funds that they already had set aside to in, in, in totality donate over $400,000 in grants to young men across the country. And these young men were using it for utilities or to help pay their rent or, you know, school expenses. But, you know, just to see that kind of outpouring, those were the kind of messages that we were, we were creating during the start of COVID that really showed that even in the midst of a pandemic, 
you can still create great strategy. You can still move the needle forward. You can still build connections that help organizations connect with their donors, with their audiences, with the people that they serve, or help your or help companies connect with their clients. So there's still messaging to be done. Um, to your to your question, the platforms that we use are still the same. We may use a little bit more of non-traditional and a little less here and there, but it's still the same tactics, it's still the same strategies, but with a new emphasis because we're, you know, we're dealing in a very interesting time. For sure. I, but, you know, so, so what, what's interesting is, you know, you've got, you, you really have these two things happening concurrently. <laughs> yes. I mean, yes. It, yeah, COVID in and of itself, you know, that would set a, a certain messaging. Then you add the, the um, social injustice messages, you know, and that's again, and then, the, and then they, they do come together. I, I find that in terms of the media, you know, again, you know we're, we're limited in, in some ways um, in terms of the traditional media. I mean, they only have so much bandwidth. Um, right. But to come up with stories that, again, pre-George Floyd, so let's right. separate that a little. Pre, you know, so you're dealing with COVID and, you know, everything had to be, you know, it had to have a COVID um, yes. Yes. connection. Yes. And then along comes this horrific event with, with George Floyd. And then, you know, suddenly there's, you know, new messaging and there's a new, a new emphasis. Um, you know, so you, you had these two things happening and then, you know, you know, just looking back, um, you know, then, then kind of the, the social injustice uh, dipped while COVID came back. Um, right. But social injustice is still there. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think, that, I mean, my hope is that after um, January 20th of, <laughs> of next year, that we'll be able to, uh, I mean, you're, you're in Arizona, so. Um, We're it, still counting. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> uh, ho hopefully what we'll be able to do is come back to the table mm -hmm. and, and have, have a meaningful, not only discussions, but also actions. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's really the, you know, the key thing. It's one thing to counsel. Well, what we're doing is you're, you're making your clients aware of the issues and that's what, that's what PR people do, but right. it's also helping them take, you know, suitable actions. So that leads me to my, to my last question, which is, what do you think the role of PR public relations is going to be when we emerge from this COVID era. I mean, I know it's a while away because yeah. regardless of what they're saying in the funny papers, you know, the, the <laughs> vaccine, we're going, we, you know, there is going to be a point where, where COVID hopefully will be under, uh, uh, under control. What do you think the, the role of PR is going to be in, in that case? Any changes? Uh, have we enhanced our, have we enhanced the profession? I would, I would hope we have enhanced the profession. And I'll, I'll split the two up to say why I hope. Um, where COVID is concerned, I think we have. Because COVID, while it's very big and ever-changing and, we and we're still trying to figure it out, it's a thing. It's a disease. It's a virus. It, it's a, in our mind, it's a thing to be dealt with. And, and like the flu or, or other major viruses, Ebola, whatever, in people's mind, there's a start and a finish or there's a path to get to the other side that people are willing to take. You, you wear a mask, you socially distance, you vaccinate. And to your point, as communicators, you know, we, we've put so many different angles on COVID, you know, you know, when COVID and pregnancy, COVID and, and age and COVID and weight, and, you know, we found so many ways to discuss it. So I think we continue to communicate that you follow the science 
and you follow doctor recommendations and you follow the CDC. So we're good at telling those messages because they're concrete. There's, there's rules, you follow the rules, it negates the problem. With social justice, that's where I say hope because it is not in people's mind as concrete. It is more nebulous. It is for peop some people vague and some people it's very specific. And it is the conversation that people don't want to have. So my hope as PR people, as communicators, as the leaders of thought and of change, we delve into having those conversations that will get us to the other side. Because until we make ourselves comfortable having those conversations, we can't counsel our clients. And if we can't counsel our clients, we can't make them comfortable. And we can't get them where they need to be. And it's about having authentic conversations, having strategic solutions that are based in your values, that are based in your clients' values, your employees, your vendors. So that's why I stay hopeful that what we've experienced this year with social justice is not just a moment, but a movement that will change where we end up in the long term. But as you said, I live in Arizona. <laughs> this is 2020. <laughs> We've just had a very divisive election cycle and people are still kind of um, getting over that and getting past that. So it'll be interesting where we as a, as a country and as a nation end up. But I think communicators have the power to change that trajectory. We just have to wield that power and, and use the power for good and not for evil, you know? And, and I think the, the rest of the country follows. So well, I think we're good. I, I, share, your, I share your optimism. I, I also, um, uh, full disclosure, in my um, stalking, I mean, Googling of you, <laughs> I, I happened on um, a few videos. You uh -oh. know, I, I see, no, no, no. I see that you, you've been participating in some very meaningful um, workshops and discussions. Uh, mostly it looks like under PRSA, mm -hmm. um, and, which I think is great. Um, you know, and I, I and think I, there's I, one I, under Business Wire as well, I think. It, so, so I think that you know the more that we can do to um, to keep having that discussion, I think we'll we'll keep the keep the issue to the to a point where we, we can start not only talking about it but doing something about it. And I mean that, that that's really um, you know, but it's but it's keeping you know, unfortunately, because of you know these changing news cycles and and the bombardment of you know, of all the, the, the media and the information that we're getting, it's hard to, you know, right. all right, no, let's get back to this. All right. right. Here, here's the, you know, here's the list. And, and you see that, you know, if, you know, come January uh, 20th, um, you know, there's going to be a laundry list of issues and it's a matter of where, you know, where, where do, you know, where does it all fit? Um, right. You know, COVID, I, you know, COVID is, is going to be at the top. Absolutely. As it should, um, you know, as it should, you know, and, you know, and, and coming up with some, you know, solution to that, but, but also getting into these, um, you know, these very, very important issues. And frankly, you know, these are things that um, as PR folk, you know, we, I don't want to say that we, we, we didn't know about it because we did know about it. It's just that now we're, we're able to, to, to talk about it more mm -hmm. and hopefully this will be the time that we'll, We'll see some, some change. And, and to your point, um, I think why one of the reasons why the the social justice issues were so 
different this year because uh, you know we we've seen these scenes before we've seen these news cycles before but to your point covid made the world stop and where before you might have seen a blip on the news as you were rushing off to work and then you're coming back home and you're preparing for dinner and getting the family set you you were able to see it and then put it out of your mind when George Floyd happened and Breonna Taylor happened and Ahmaud Aubrey happened we were stuck at home watching TV watching social media not moving you know most of the country was on lockdown and so they there was nothing people could do but tune in and so there was no getting away from it because it was on a 24-hour loop but like you said what where we go now Definitely with a new administration, there's going to be a laundry list of things, COVID being at the top because the health of our country has to be paramount. And, and just earlier today, I heard 45 of the 50 states are seeing record increases again. Um, so we definitely don't have this under control. But after that, how after we heal the physical health of the country, how do we deal with healing the soul of the country. Amen. And you know something that you said though um, just sparked. You know the uh, the other big change I can say over my career is really the um, is the advent of the yeah of the cell phone. Mm -hmm. I mean that was really I mean, if you think about it, in terms of uh, in terms of of, of George Floyd, mm -hmm. it was that video. Yes, and then. You know the fact that it got out through the social. I mean, that's that was the. Now, without that, it, it, it would be it would be you know those things were happening, but we didn't know about them. But now everyone is reporting. Everyone's walking around, and yeah. I think we're very much aware. And you're you know you, you you go to events or you go anywhere, and people are immediately pulling up yeah. their their phones. And I think that something that I tell um, you know when when I'm consulting with with clients is. You know, first of all, nothing that you do is going to escape public scrutiny. Mm -hmm. That's gone. Um, and you have to accept that and then use it. I mean, so yeah. that the, the power of, of citizens with, with, with cell phones, I think, was very evident by, by, um, by George Floyd in terms of keeping, in keeping the, the, um, the issue to the forefront. And we just have to, you know, bring it back. And to your point, it was also the cell phone that was very pivotal to bringing the this case with Ahmaud Aubrey to focus because there was video footage that had been tucked away somewhere and and someone leaked it to the media, media and it was somebody's phone video of the killing of Ahmaud Aubrey. So like you said, not only are we walking around experiences where we have video cameras in our hand no matter what and so clients have to be aware that there there's always the possibility of actions to become public and so if, if they continue to practice and think that way they stay on the side of not having to deal with the aftermath of a video coming out as, as a lot of companies have, have found out the hard way. But it's, it's, it's just another tool in the toolkit. You know, there's some people that still feel that social media is a, is a toolkit in and of itself, but we always like to say that it's a tool in a, a larger toolkit that should be grounded in strategy and research and, and planning and, you know, tied to your not only your business strategy but your company values absolutely thank you latricia latricia woods president of mahogany zon <laughs> communications in chandler arizona for being on the show <laughs> all right thank you I know. <laughs> first my name then the company name is just it's a lot it's, going on. It's, it's okay. It's all right. That's important for me to get it right. And, I, and I, I thank you for coming on the show. I also want to thank Rich Melanson at BCTV for helping to edit the show. Uh, Rachel Cohn, my daughter, who's a professor of art at uh, 
Ball State University in Muncie, who's giving me technical assistance on the podcast, and also Twin Musicom for the music Hat the Jazz that you hear at the beginning and end of the show. I'm Marty Cohn in Vermont. Stay healthy. Stay healthy.